الحكيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم يا رحمن يا رحيم يا كريم يا منان يا رب العالمين اللهم وفقنا بما تحب وترضى اللهم وفقنا بما تحب وترضى اللهم وفقنا بما تحب وترضى اللهم اجمعنا واجمع قلوبنا كما جمعت المهاجرين والأنصار يا رب العالمين اللهم اجمع قلوبنا على الحق يا رب العالمين يا رحمن يا رحيم اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه يا رب العالمين يا الله show us truth as truth and inspire us to follow يا الله show us falsehood as falsehood and, and يا الله grace us grace us to abstain والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Thank you. Please remain standing for the national anthem and the Bang Samorohim. Mga kababayan, ang pamban ng Pilipinas. Oh, 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 oh,
please be seated. We ask uh, Deputy Speaker Attorney Romeo Yasser, I sorry, Omer Yasser, C. Sema, uh, to give the opening remarks. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim My courtesies to the Chair Of this Committee The Committee on Rules The Presiding Officer The Vice Chair Of this Committee Attorney Rai Jury, The Minister of Social Services and Development. The officers of the Bangsamora government who are present and who are likewise uh, members of this committee. The officers of the parliament, particularly the deputy speakers who are in full force, I believe. We are in full force here, the officers of the parliament. The resource persons who are present. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. It is with great honor that I have been given the privilege to open the second day of the public consultations on Parliament Bill Number no. 29 or the proposed Pangsamoro Electoral Code. To follow the line of fellow Deputy Speaker Attorney Nabil Tan, this bill, hyped as it is, is one of our indispensable mandate as members of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority, demanded by the very law that established the Bangsamoro Government, Republic Act No. 11054. Our task is daunting and gargantuan, as this proposed electoral code is at the very core of the democratic process that ensure our people will freely exercise their fundamental right to suffrage, to vote, or to be voted upon as guaranteed by the 1987 Constitution, but under the parliamentary setup of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, with all its peculiarities. And yesterday, we all agreed that the proposed measure must be free of constitutional infirmities. However, the constitutionality of this proposed law is not the end we seek in these consultations. There are other elements and considerations that we must strive to achieve in this proposed code. Our collective ideals and aspirations as people of the Bangsamoro must be written in this law. This proposed measure must pave the way for a genuine, credible, free, honest, open, orderly, inclusive, less interfered with by the powers that be from Manila, and more importantly, it should ensure the elusive, peaceful elections in the region we all desire. Timely enough, our resource persons for today's consultations are our fellow stakeholders whom we share these ideals and aspirations. First, the LENTE, the Legal Network for Truthful Elections, the National System.
National Citizens Movement for Free Elections, or NAMPEL, the Parish Pastoral Council for Responsible Voting, the Ateneo School of Government, the Philippine Center for Islam and Democracy, the Bangsamoro Free Elections Movement, the Women Engage in Action on UNSCR, or WE ACT, UNSCR uh, what's this? 1E25, or WE ACT, the Mindanao Organization for Social and Economic Progress, Incorporated, MOSEP, of course, the Integrated Bar of the Philippines. I will no longer mention the names of the persons representing these organizations because they will be acknowledged later by the presiding officer the beginning of the deliberations of the consultations. I'm sure we will heal from them what we have in our minds as ordinary electorates of the Bangsamoro and as members of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority. I agree that our clamor for genuine, free, and peaceful elections are hindered by factors that are, that are beyond our control, as security and policing are still within the mandate, are still within the competence of the national government and beyond the control of this proposed law. As currently experienced under Patas Pambansa Bilang 881 or the Omnibus Election Code of the Philippines. But our work must therefore be not limited in just passing this proposed bill. We must continue the building of the institutions of our self-governance and we must therefore labor outside the halls of the parliament to ensure that the external factors such as, but not limited to this, loose firearms and, the, and their bearers and their patrons, that they should be at least diminished or otherwise neutralized before the 2025 elections. True enough, the revolutionaries are voluntarily disarming and decommissioning. But the lingering question is when do the private armed groups disarm? I agree that the process is not part of our mandate, but a responsibility of the security apparatus of the state. But that process must begin as we begin the legislation of this proposed bill. Otherwise, it will be status quo in the first parliamentary state, uh, elections in 2025. Equally important is our task to ensure that the reserved seats of the sectors mentioned in the Bangsamoro Organic Law are to be filled by the will of the sectors concerned and not interfered upon, hindered, or otherwise influenced. We must ensure that the women, the youth, the indigenous communities, the traditional leaders, and the settlers shall have their processes promoted, respected, and protected by this proposed electoral code. Having said all of this, I shall end this opening remarks having stated what other tasks must be done outside the legislation of proposed bill number 29. These three questions. After the passing of this proposed law, Will it be business as usual in 2025? Are our desires and demands for change, for genuine, for free, credible, honest, less interfered, and peaceful, non-violent elections just wishful thinking and rhetorical? Or are we asserting our self-governance and self-determination and exercise our political will to take everything further to achieve what we collectively dream with our people in the Bangsamoro. Welcome everyone. Wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Thank you, Deputy Speaker Sema. We welcome everyone to the second day of our public consultation with national stakeholders on BTA Bill Number 29, conducted by the Bangsamoro Parliament's Committee on Rules. Our Chair, 
Attorney Sha Elijah Dumama Alba is in another meeting. And as Vice Chair of the Committee, I will take her place for today's consultation. So today we will be hearing from non-government organizations, academic institutions, election watchdogs, women's organizations, lawyers' organizations, and other groups that have a stake in clean, orderly, and fair elections in the Bangsamoro. Many of them we know and have been with us in our journey towards the establishment of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. As experts and stakeholders in the peace negotiations that eventually yielded the framework agreement on the Bangsamoro in 2012, 10 years ago, and the comprehensive agreement on the Bangsamoro in 2014, as lobbyists for the passage of what was then the Bangsamoro Basic Law. Some were also with us during the conduct of the plebiscite for the ratification of Republic Act 11054 and the inclusion of additional areas. And many joined us in disseminating information to the general public, both in the national level and in our Bangsamoro communities, on the peace process and on the Bangsamoro. So we are happy that they are still with us as we build institutions, systems, and processes that would allow the Bangsamoro to continue reaping the gains of the peace process after having struggled for and achieved genuine autonomy. It is in this context that we ask our resource persons to see the proposed electoral code with an understanding of where we are coming from. That we, what we have is a political system different from the presidential form of government where we hope to establish a stronger party system and ensure that we continue to exercise our right to freely determine our political status and pursue our economic, social, and cultural development. We hope we are all cognizant of the import of the bill to the Bank tomorrow. By 2025, we will be engaging in a political exercise where we expect to elect our leaders in the regular Bank tomorrow government and likewise in our constituent local government units. We want to make sure that said political exercise and those that will follow it will reflect the will of the people in the bank tomorrow and will help define parliamentary, the parliamentary system that we have chosen under the Peace Agreement and Republic Act 11054. The honorable resource persons have come prepared and have taken time out of their busy schedules to present to us their proposal. Uh, they have scrutinized our deal, have written position papers, and they will make their presentations to us today. So we take in advance Attorney Bert M. Estrella, who is National President of the Integrated Bar of the Philippines. Uh, may we ask Attorney Estrada to stand up? Thank you, sir. Mr. Angel S. Averia Jr., who is National Chairperson of NAMFREL. Father David Procalia, Regional Coordinator for Mindanao and Board of Trustees of the Parish Pastoral Council for Res Responsible Voting or PPCRB, and Mr. Jude Manuel S. Liao, Executive Director of the same organization. We also have Attorney Emilio Marañon III, a Research Fellow of the Ateneo School of Government, Attorney Salma Pierre Rasul, Programs Director of the Philippine Center for Islam and Democracy, or PCID. Together with her are Mr. M Mr. Miara Poliarco and or Myra, I'm not sure. And Ms. Linar May Orbista. We also have Ms. Sandy Libedro, Election Specialist from the Bangsamoro Free Election Movement. Dr. Socorro Reyes from the Center for Legislative Development of De La Salle Institute of Governance. Attorney Ona Caritos, Executive Director from the Legal Network for Truthful Elections. And together with her are Ms. Brisa Rosales, Program Director, Attorney Carlo Africa, Consultant, Ms. Alexa Yadao, Junior Project Officer, and Mr. Jervis Bangan, Research Associate. We also have Ms. Yasmin Busran Lau, who was also with the Government Peace Panel 
but is also the founding uh, the founding chair of the Women Engaged in Action on UNSCR 1325. And lastly, we have Ms. Mariam K. Ali, Program Manager of the Mindanao Organization for Social and Economic Program, or MOSEP. On the part of the Bank Samora Parliament, we acknowledge the presence of the following. Attorney, members of the Parliament, Attorney Liza Alamia, Mosber Alauddin, Eddie Ali, Engineer Baintan Ampatuan, Dr. Susana Anayatin, Attorney Mary Ann Arnado, Attorney Anna Tarhata Basman, Mr. Suharto Esmael, Matarul Estino, Architect Edward Guerra, Abdullah Hashim, Mohager Iqbal, Attorney Jose Lorena, Abdul Rauf A. Makakua, Dr. Marjani Makasalong, Amrusi Makatanong, Baileng S. Mantawil, Tawakal B. Midtimbang, Attorney Rasul Mitmug Jr., Attorney Ubaida Pakasem, Attorney Randolph Parcasio, Attorney uh, uh, Mr. Romeo Sema, Said M. Sheik, Dr. Kadil Sinalinding Jr., Engineer Aida Silongan, uh, Basir D. Uto. Ex, as ex-officio members, we have with us Deputy Speaker Attorney Lanang Ali Jr., uh, Deputy Speaker Hatimil Hassan, Deputy Speaker Benjamin Loong, Deputy Speaker Abdul Karim Miswari, Deputy Speaker Attorney Omar Yasser Sema, and Deputy Speaker Attorney Nabiltan, and the one I mentioned earlier, Attorney Liza Alamia. Uh, also joining us are the following members of the Parliament, Muhammad Kelly Antau, Rasul E. Esmael, Engineer Don Mustafa Loong, Tarhata Matalam Maglangit, Jafar Apollo Mikhail Matalam, Amil Bahar Mawadil, uh, Ishak V. Mastura, who I understand will be uh, one year older by tomorrow. <laughs> older. Okay, not one year old. Okay, uh, at this point, we will now move to the short presentation of the salient features of BTA Bill Number 29. We ask the Secretariat through Mr. Gerardo Concepcion III to introduce the drafters who work with the Cabinet Committee that was tasked to work on the bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Our presenters of the salient features of the BTA Bill Number 29 or the proposed Bangsamoro Electoral Code are the following. Dean Nor Habib Bin Suod S. Barodi. Dean Barodi is an associate professor of law and presently the dean of MSU College of Law. He is a member of the prestigious core of prof professors of the Philippine Judicial Academy, or PILJA, Supreme Court of the Philippines. He is a fellow of the Philippine College of Juris Consults. Dean Barodi is a member of both the Philippine Bar and the Philippine Sharia Bar, placing second in the 2006 Special Sharia Bar Examinations. In 2020, he was appointed by the Supreme Court of the Philippines as examiner in procedure in Sharia courts in the 2020 Special Sharia Bar Examinations. Next is Attorney Mabandes S. Diron Jr. He is currently the Presidential Management Staff Director of the Office of the MSU System President. He is a professor of law at Mindanao State University College of Law since 2012. He also previously served as Assistant Dean and College Secretary of the College of Law. He is also the drafter of the Lanao Environment Code and its implementing rules and regulations. Moreover, he has published a book on political law entitled Compilation of Cases, Bar Questions, and Basic Principles in Political Law. Next is Attorney Nashiba G. Didaagon Diron. She is a holder of four postgraduate degrees, namely 
Master in Public Safety Administration, Master in Public Administration, Master of Arts in Education, Major in School Administration, and Juris Doctor Degree on top of her Bachelor of Secondary Education, Major in English Degree. She is currently the Assistant Provincial Attorney of the Provincial Local Government Unit of Lanao del Sur and a lecturer at Mindanao State University College of Law, handling election law, among others. She served as technical expert and legal consultant to various BARM ministries and development partners. So may we call on the uh, drafters to make the presentation before we proceed with the public consultation proper. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alladhi bi ni'matihi tatimu salihat. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Subhanaka la ilmalana illa ma'allamtana innaka antal alimun hakim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. With the kind permission of the presiding officer and members of the Honorable Committee on uh, Rules, on behalf of the other presenters, Attorney Mabandis Diron Jr. and Attorney Nashiba Didagan Diron, uh, it is my pleasure to present the salient features of the Bank Samro Electoral uh, Code. The Bank Samro Electoral Code, as proposed, actually took inspiration from the various um, uh, features of uh, parliamentary democracies, most particularly those in uh, Europe. So uh, a, a cerebral uh, reading of the provisions of the proposed BEC uh, would bring us the uh, following observations that I think permeate the proposed uh, draft. And for purposes of this presentation, I would just uh, uh, go on with a descriptive approach in the presentation. The elections in Barm is actually peculiar because we are under a parliamentary form of uh, government. And uh, the, our assessment is that the proposed BEC is actually a reflection of that peculiarity of elections in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Similarly, the setup in the BARM is actually unique and complex, therefore necessitating the introduction of new provisions that are not necessarily found in the Omnibus Election Code and other pertinent uh, election laws. And then finally, the proposed BEC is actually an affirmation of the autonomy of the BARM in accordance with the uh, Constitution. The first salient feature that we want to emphasize, just like in similar with other laws, is the scope of the apl applicability of the proposed uh, BEC. That the provisions of the BEC shall be applicable to any matter relating to the conduct of uh, elections in the BARM. As a proposed election law, it is but uh, a given that uh, this code will govern any matter relating to the conduct of elections in BARM. Nonetheless, we know for a fact that there are limitations imposed, not imposed by the Constitution itself, as well as other national election laws. Therefore, the scope of applicability of the BEC uh, has to be canalized in such a way that it accommodates these limitations, constitutional limitations and other legal limitations. Therefore, you can find in there an exception clause in Section 3 of Article 1, which says that uh, except in cases which are expressly not governed by the uh, BEC. The proposed BEC enhances 
the uh, creation or establishment of the Bank Samaro Electoral uh, Office uh, to be composed of a chief electoral officer as presiding officer and two electoral officers as members. Yesterday, the, some of the representatives from Comelec were around. Therefore, we emphasized that the enhancements must be with prior approval from the Commission on, uh, on Elections. Now, the creation of the Bank Samoro Electoral Office finds its basis in the provisions of Section 40 of Article 7 of the Bank Samoro Organic Law. Under that provision, the Commission on Elections shall establish a Bank Samoro Electoral Office. With emphasis on that uh, terminology there, Bank Samoro Electoral Office. The implication of this provision is that whatever electoral office that will be established in the BARM, it shall be referred to as the Bank Samoro Electoral Office. Nonetheless, the proposed BEC acknowledges and recognizes the uh, retention of the COMELEC power of control and supervision over the Bank Samoro Electoral uh, Office. Under uh, Article 2, Section 1, it says that notwithstanding the provisions enhancing the uh, Bank Samoro Electoral Office, the same office shall be under the control and supervision of the COMELEC. The power of control is defined by the Supreme Court in a particular way. And in this context, in the context of the BEC, we are referring to the power of the COMELEC to alter, modify, nullify, and set aside what the BEO has done in the performance of its functions and to substitute the judgment of the COMELEC over that of the Bank Samoro Electoral Office. As an affirmation of that control and supervision by the COMELEC over the BEO, Article 2, Section 4 likewise provides that all decisions of the BEO shall be appealable to the COMELEC. And as we, we would like to reiterate that to eradicate any doubt as to the power of control and supervision of COMELEC over the BEO, the uh, Article, section, uh, Article 2, Section uh, 4 of the proposed BEC uh, further provides that nothing herein, meaning to see in the BEC, shall operate to deprive the Comelec of its powers over the decisions or orders of the BEO under existing national election laws. The budget of the Bank Samuro Electoral Office shall be part of the yearly budget of the uh, Commission on Elections. This is actually a reiteration of that provision in the uh, uh, Bank Samor Organic Law. Nonetheless, in the proposed BEC, uh, we do not prevent or prohibit the Bank Samor Parliament from augmenting the operational expenses of the BO through the enactment of a supplemental budget by the Bank Samor Parliament. Okay, uh, what is the general description of the BEO as uh, proposed in the BEC? The Bank Samuro Electoral Office shall be the central body of the BARM in the supervision of all elections therein. I would like to emphasize on the terminology there, supervision. Control is not included because the power of control belongs to the COMELEC, but nonetheless, in the supervision of any matter relating to elections in BARM that can be left to the uh, Bank Samor Electoral Office. The powers of the BEO are likewise enhanced to include delegated uh, powers from the Commission on Elections. And the purpose or rationale of this um, uh, specific expansion is to ensure compliance of laws and other pertinent rules of the Commission. There are several powers of the Bank Samoro Electoral Office. In the context of this presentation, these powers are either original or 
uh, delegated uh, powers. Now, I understand that an advanced copy of the proposed BEC has been uh, provided to all the participants in this uh, public consultation. In the interest of time and expediency, I would just like to emphasize on certain powers which are highlighted in the screen. So uh, the Bangsamoro Electoral Office shall exercise the following powers and functions. For instance, it has power and functions over registration of political parties with qualifications as prescribed herein. It also has, it also has powers, power and functions uh, over accreditation of regional political parties as approved by the commission. The power and function in the supervision of general assemblies and party conventions in nominating their respective nominees in the election. This power seeks to implement the significant or important provisions of the proposed BEC that uh, govern uh, political uh, parties. Power and function to recommend to the parliament reallocation of parliamentary district seats in case of increase of population figures affecting the division of parliamentary districts. Okay. The uh, submission of report to the parliament six months after every election of the conduct of the election in general, including election irregularities. The chief minister shall within 30 days cause the publication of the report. And then to hear and decide motu proprio or upon complaint by a party or any member thereof or by any registered voter cases of political turncutism. So this power and function of the BEO actually implements the uh, proposed provisions of the BEC governing or regulating the uh, political uh, turncutism. Article 2, Section 8 of the proposed draft provides for the delegated powers of the Bangsamoro Electoral uh, Office. So the Bangsamoro Electoral Office, as may be delegated, the implication of this language that as may be delegated means that there has to be a delegation from the COMELEC before these powers and functions can be exercised by the Bangsamoro Electoral Office. First, to appoint and fill vacancies of subordinate positions in the regions from utility worker up to stenographer. Prepare the regional budget, disburse authorized funds, and perform other related fiscal functions. And then the BEO also has power and function over uh, uh, procurement. The approval of registration of political parties in the region. Cause the cancellation of nominations and certificate of candidacies of party representation and constituency representation candidates should there be misrepresentation in the respective party nomination. Cause the dissolution of political parties upon notice and hearing, motu proprio, or upon complaint by a party member or by any registered voter for offenses prohibited by the BEC. And then hear and decide petitions for clustering of precincts. Hear and decide election violations, approve release of public funding to qualified political parties, update the entry on the list of registration of voters and cause the investigations thereof, enlist non-partisan group or organization of citizens, etc., etc., to assist in ensuring free, orderly, and honest elections. Investigate anomalies in the search of the list of registered voters and cause its delisting after notice and hearing on grounds provided by, re uh, by relevant laws, rules, and regulations, the power to prosecute election offenses, and the performance of such other powers as the COMELEC may assign for efficient and effective enforcement of this uh, BEC. 
The Bank Samoro Electoral Office is further enhanced to include several bureaus numbering to six. First, the Party Representation Bureau, then the Constituency Representation Bureau, then the Election Assessors Bureau, the Provincial Operations Bureau, the National and Local Elections Bureau, and Administration and Finance Bureau. What are the primary responsibilities of these bureaus? The Party Representation Bureau is responsible in ensuring full compliance of the political party provisions under the BEC. The Constituency Representation Bureau is responsible for ensuring full compliance of the provisions of this code, which are specifically applicable to members of the parliament who are directly elected on district-wide basis. The Provincial Operations Bureau uh, shall be primarily responsible for the operations of the bureaus at the level of all provinces comprising the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. To cascade this primary responsibility of the Provincial Operations Bureau, the proposed BEC likewise proposes several units to be created under the Provincial Operations Bureau. What are these? The Administration and Finance Unit, the um, Constituency Unit, National and Local Elections Unit, Election Assessors Unit, Party Representation Unit, Parliamentary District Field Office, and Municipal Offices. Okay. The National and Local Elections Bureau shall be primarily, primarily responsible for the conduct of local elections, including the Sangguniang Kabataan elections and Barangay elections and national elections. It is also responsible for the conduct of referendum, plebiscite, initiative, and uh, recall. I forgot to mention uh, the uh, Election Assessors Bureau. The Election Assessors Bureau is the lead investigatory body of the Bangsamoro Electoral Office and shall serve as its legal department to ensure compliance of the provisions of this proposed BEC, the Omnibus, Ele Omnibus Election Code, and other laws, thereby ensuring free and fair elections. What is new in this elections, Election Assessors Bureau is that as, an, as, as the lead investigatory body, it may act moto proprio without waiting for any command from any other higher uh, authority, it may initiate investigations on its own, in its own, on its own initiative. And then the um, Administration and Finance Bureau shall be responsible for the financial and administrative operations of the Bank Samoro Electoral Office. Okay, let's move to one of the major salient features of the proposed BEC, the proposed creation of the Bangsamoro Parliament Electoral Tribunal. The language of Section 1 of the proposed, uh, of Article 4, is actually uh, replicating the language used in the Constitution of the Philippines pertaining to the creation of the House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal. The Bank Samaru Parliament shall have an electoral tribunal which shall be the sole judge of all contests relating to the election, returns, and qualifications of members of the parliament. This BPET or Bank Samaru Parliament Electoral Tribunal shall be composed of the following officers. Number one, we have the chief electoral officer, the head of the BEO, and then as ex officio chairman, and then two retired judges of any of the regional trial courts in the BARM, and then six members of the parliament who shall be chosen on the basis of proportional representation. The number 
in the composition of the BO, uh, I mean the BPET, likewise uh, replicates the number of the composition of the electoral tribunals under the um, under the constitution. Only that the uh, uh, the judicial component of the membership of the BPET is reduced from three to two retired judges of any of the regional trial courts in the bar. What is the idea behind the proposal about the creation of the Bangsamoro uh, Parliament Electoral Tribunal? Well, we know for a fact that under the present state of law and jurisprudence, any contest relating to the qualification, jurisdiction always lies with the Comelec. But similar with the idea behind the HRET, once a candidate or a candidate elect in a parliamentary position becomes a member of the parliament, then the jurisdiction shall shift as proposed to the Bangsamoro Parliament Electoral Tribunal. This is in due deference to the status of the Bangsamoro Parliament whose creation, to reiterate, is by virtue of the autonomy of the Bangsamoro as recognized and established by the Constitution itself. Moving on, on the other salient features of the proposed BEC, in Article 5, Section 1, the, pro the proposed BEC uh, emphasizes or emphasizes, as we'd say, the principle of political parties. That political party is the essence of a parliamentary democracy. As observed and experienced in other parliamentary democracies, political parties actually act as mechanism where people can directly participate in the affairs of the government through a chain of delegation to the party. The stronger the political party in a parliamentary democracy is the robust the accountability and good governance are. In the proposed BEC, the following are actually the requisites for the creation of political parties, regional political parties, that these political parties must be established by at least 10,000 residents with voting rights. And then um, uh, the membership of these political parties must be distributed as far as practicable to the different provinces and cities comprising the Barm territory. And then this political party shall have, shall, shall have established provincial and city chapters as well as municipal chapters when applicable. To ensure that our political parties in the Barm are actually genuine political parties, the proposed BEC likewise uh, imposes upon these political parties to create as a matter uh, of uh, law, as proposed in the BEC, the following committees or bodies. The Executive Committee, the General Party Committee, the Delegates Committee, Local Branches, Party Arbitral Committee, and Membership Committee. Nonetheless, the proposed BEC does not prohibit the political parties from creating other bodies or committees which they deem necessary in their operations as a political party. Article 6, Section 14 provides for the manner of allocation of the party representation seats. The first rule under this provision uh, imposes or establishes the 4% threshold that only those political parties that participate or participate, I should say, in the parliamentary elections who obtain at least 4% of the total valid votes cast in the uh, parliamentary elections are entitled to one guaranteed seat each. You will notice in the second paragraph that only the winning parties are allocated additional seats. Those who did not obtain at least 4% of the total valid votes cast in the parliamentary elections are not entitled to additional seats. 
The fact that they did not obtain 4% simply means that they lost the election. Um, the parties shall, that are entitled to guaranteed seats shall be ranked from highest to lowest as uh, uh, advised by the Supreme Court in that case of Banad versus Comelec. Paragraph B of this provision likewise provides for the rule on proportional representation that additional seats shall be allocated to the winning parties only with each winning party entitled to such number of additional seats as are in proportion to its total number of votes. The winning party shall enjoy priority in the allocation of additional seats according to the ranking from the highest down to the lowest, but not a single political party may be entitled to any additional seat in excess of 50% membership of the Bangsa Moro Parliament. The proposed BEC likewise regulates political trancutism under Article 6 of Section 16 that any elected party representative who changes political party affiliation during the representative's term of office shall ipso facto, automatic, forfeit the seat in the parliament which shall be filled by another member of his prior party uh, affiliation with a further regulation that if the elected party representative changes political party affiliation within six months before an election, the same person shall not be eligible for nomination as party representative under the new party or organization. Section 17 of the same article gives us the salient provisions that regulate the concept of closed list nominees. That there shall be an indirect election of party representatives through election of representatives by their party affiliations. This simply means that each political party has to submit the list of nominees which shall in no case be more than 14 nominees corresponding to the uh, total number of uh, seats available for uh, party representation in the composition of the Bangsamoro Parliament. The list shall be arranged in chronological order, not, in, not by way of other or other forms of uh, arrangement, okay? In chronological order of their nomination. Uh, at least 10% of the nominees in the list shall preferably be qualified party members who are, uh, who are uh, women. This uh, sees to it that the there's a women component in every list of political, uh, political parties in the barn. The next provision there actually gives the public the uh, opportunity to check and balance political parties in so far as their list of nominees is concerned. Any interested person or organization shall, upon request, be provided with the list of nominees and their chronological order of the nomination with reasonable cost for its reproduction. The closed list nominees uh, in the perspective of the Bangsamo Organic Law, does not, however, preclude the power of political parties to determine who can sit from among its nominees and to unseat any party member sitting in the parliament for breach of party loyalty or violation of party rules or policies. And then finally, the proposed BEC seeks to establish a barn political party subsidy fund. Under Article 13, Section 3, it says, six months after the first parliamentary elections, the parliament shall, by law, establish a barn political party subsidy fund which shall be used to augment the operating funds of accredited political parties. That ends my presentation. Thank you very much. Wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you, Dean uh, Barodi. Um, 
will now proceed with the consultations and we will hear from our invited resource persons. But before that, uh, I'd like to acknowledge also Attorney Janet Florita, uh, for, who is Executive Director of Tanggong Tanggapang Panligal ng Katutubong Pilipino or Panlipi, uh, who will also be making uh, their presentation later as a resource person. May we invite her to join us uh, here on the table. Um, and then we will ask now the Secretariat to read to us the House Rules uh, that will guide the resource persons in their presentations and the members of Parliament also um, in the consultation proper. Thank you, Madam Chair. The House Rules for the Public Consultation on the Proposed Bangsamoro Electoral Code. Number one. Resource persons may only speak after having been recognized by the presiding officer. Resource persons are requested to raise a hand to be recognized. Second, resource persons are requested to speak no more than 20 minutes. Reminders as to the remaining time will be given by the secretariat. Third, resource persons are requested to cite the specific provisions in the proposed Bangsamoro Electoral Code, they wish to comment on and state their recommendations thereon. And lastly, resource persons are highly encouraged to submit position papers. Position papers may still be received on or before October, 30, October 31, 2022 via email at parliamentary.read at bta.gov.ph or parliamentary.rules at bta.gov.ph. Thank you very much. Just to be clarified, the deadline is October 31, not October 30. Okay. So uh, written submissions can still be submitted um, on or before October 31. Uh, but now we will hear from our resource persons. I will start with the uh, recognizing the Bangsamoro Free Election Movement or BFEM. Can we now call Ms. Sandilin Bedro? Uh, Ma'am, you have the floor. Uh, please be mindful of the time. You have 20 minutes. Hello, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is uh, the first draft of our statement. The statement of the Bangsamoro Free Elections Movement, Citizens Watch on the Draft Electoral Code of BARM. This is just a two-page paper, so I think it's less than five minutes. The Bangsamoro Free Elections Movement, BFEM, has been an active partner of the Commission on Elections since the 2019 plebiscite in the region. BFEM was officially recognized through administrative orders issued by the Commission in Bank, serving its true purpose from 2019 plebiscite up to the 2022 national and local elections. BFEM's members are composed of Muslim, Christians, and non-Moro IPs, IP volunteers, who share and exchange technical expertise in the observation and monitoring of the election processes in BARM. The principle of BARM on moral governance, such as transparency, integrity, involvement, and accountability, serves as a guide to the purpose and mission of BFEM. As citizens armed, BFEM would again emphasize its goal to serve the true nature of free elections where the will of the people will be heard, recognized, and respected, free from intimidation, coercion, and threat. BFEM will work closely with women and youth as key partners in promoting electoral reform and new politics in the autonomous region. Related to the crafting of the electoral code in BARM, BFEM would like to suggest that roles and responsibilities of different volunteer citizen watch groups to observe the process in BARM be broadened to wit, 
We mentioned here two sections of the bill, Section 26, Other Watchers, and Section 24, Watchers During Canvas. I will just uh, uh, re read uh, this Section 26, the duly accredited citizen arm of the commission shall be entitled to appoint a watcher in every polling place, other civic, religious, professional, business service, youth, and any other similar organizations with prior authority of the commission shall be entitled collectively to appoint one watcher in every polling place. So we propose that the accreditation to, to add more. This is our proposal. First is accreditation of all volunteer citizens watch groups shall be at the national level and synchronized and fully coordinated at the regional and provincial levels. Election watch groups, a citizen's arm of COMELEC, shall be given ample involvement in the conduct of citizens' voters' education and all related election information campaigns. A God-fearing election is what we want to promote, both for voters and to different political parties in BARM. And this includes the watchers and observers of the electoral process. Question on how to mainstream Islamic principles before, during, and after the election will be advocated during the information campaigns. On section 24, watchers during canvas, let me read, each candidate political party or coalition of political parties shall be entitled to appoint one watcher in the board of canvassers. The watcher shall have the right to be present at take note uh, of all the proceedings of the Board of Canvassers to file protest against an irregularity in the election return submitted and to obtain from the Board of Canvassers a resolution thereon. From BFEM, we would like to also add, during canvassing and counting, establishment of a free and independent counting center for all political parties and volunteer election watch groups to help collect and gather data together for to get, uh, gather data for the triangulation of election results, compare and contrast data, lower percentage of error, and correct errors immediately. The establishment of the counting places shall be in partnership with any computer schools with recognized computer programs in BARN and together with print, radio, and broadcasting companies. So I think those are the uh, recommendations from BFIM, and we would like to also add that all these processes shall be, uh, be before the finality of all this, at least there will be several community, community consultations for the conduct on, on how to do the electoral process, ensuring further that we um, propel the concepts of gender equality and social inclusion. And electoral reform will only be effective, it will be adopted, observed, and actually practiced by the voters so they can truly exercise the right of suffrage. And BARM, of course, should be able to play a significant role to educate, inform, and support the voters, especially in the registration and strengthening of political parties. So I think those are, that is from BFIM. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Bedro from uh, BFIM. Uh, they also submitted a written position paper, no? Uh, and this has been disseminated to the members. Um, we now call on uh, Ms. Yasmin Busran Lau from the Women Engaged in Action on UNSCR 1325. You have a maximum of 20 minutes. Honorable Madam Vice Chair and Minister MP Attorney Raisa Jajuri, officers and members of the Bangsamoro Parliament, fellow resource persons, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Culture dictates how we think, act, and relate with one another. Cultural norms shape how women and men should comport themselves in society even in politics. In this aspect, the predominant thinking is that political leadership is the domain of men and women should stay inside the home and enjoy their role as wives, mothers, sisters, and daughters. But we also know that culture is not cast in stone. It, it is fluid, dynamic, and changes over time. 
Muslim scholars have argued that jurisprudence has inbuilt mechanisms commensurate with changes in society as many historical studies have demonstrated. We submit that the outcomes in the application of Muslim jurisprudence is the centrality of social justice. That is, that every law must deliver social justice. Adel or justice is never an optional outcome. It is the essence of Muslim jurisprudence. The Holy Quran reveals that when Allah created human beings as his kilafa or vicegerents on earth, as mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 31, who took on the covenant of amana or trust in Surah Al-Ahzab, Ayah 72, he was referring to both men and women. These divine commandments together with al-mas'uliya or responsibility are obligatory to every believing men and women. The Quran further elaborated this when it speaks of believing men and women as protectors of one another and enjoying what is good and forbid what is evil in Surah Al-Tawbah, Surah uh, Ayah 71. Believing men and women who perform their duties such as submitting to Allah, who are obedient, truthful, steadfast, and so forth, as mentioned in Surah Al-Ahzab, Ayah 36. Finally, Allah gave full equality on the rights of women on all spheres of life when he says, Whoso acts righteously, whether male or female, and is a believer, we will surely grant him pure life, and we will surely bestow on such the reward according to the best of their work. Surah Al-Nahal, Ayah 98. The same promise is also mentioned in Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 125, as well as in many other verses in the Quran and Hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the early days of Islam, when Muslims were, were a persecuted minority in Mecca, the women played crucial roles as equal partners of men in ensuring the protection, nurturance, empowerment, development, and eventual victory of the Muslim Ummah as wives, daughters, martyrs, combatants, health workers, businesswomen, teachers, and others. None of us can deny the crucial roles of Khadija Radialanha, Um Ayman, Sumaya, Aisa Radialanha, Fatima, and so many others. The Quran also mentions Asiya, wife of Pharaoh, Mary, mother of Jesus alayhi salam, as among the women of paradise due to their exemplary faith and courage. Similar with the persecuted minority of the early Muslims in Makkah, the Bangsamoro needs all the equal positive contributions of its good citizens, men and women, who comprise half of the society in its process of moving forward from the historical injustices it has experienced in the past towards a more just, prosperous, and peaceful society. Finally, it is also written in our history that before the coming of the colonizers, women were regarded as leaders, as babaylanes, and advisors to sultans and datus. It is, within this it is within this premise that we share our position on enhancing women's role and participation in the new political entity that will be articulated under the Bangsamoro Electoral Code. As the draft measure claims to allow democratic political participation and reflecting the genuine will of the electorate, Article 1, Section 2, we fail to see the articulation of its commitment to women's political participation as provided for in the Annex of on Power Sharing in the Comprehensive Agreement on the Bangsamoro. The Bangsamoro Assembly shall be representative of the Bangsamoro's constituent political units, as well as women and other sectors, and that representation in the Assembly shall reflect the diversity of the Bangsamoro. We do respect to the framers of the proposed electoral code. We find that the provisions contained therein fall short of the mandate to the Bangsamoro Transition Authority as contained in the Bangsamoro Organic Law or Republic Act RA 11054, that Parliament shall enact a law 
that gives recognition to the important role of women in nation building and regional development, ensuring the representation of women in other decision-making and policy-determining bodies of the Bangsamoro government, Article 9, Section 11. Bangsamoro government shall uphold and protect the fundamental rights of women as embodied in the Convention on the Elimination on All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, Article 9, Section 12. Reserve seats for women in the Bangsamoro Parliament, Article 7, Section 7, Paragraph C. Inclusion of women's agenda in political parties and involvement of women and youth in electoral nominating process, Article 7, Section 9. In this regard, we respectfully propose the following. Article 5, Section 3, Establishment of Political Parties. Political parties to be established by at least 10,000 residents with neither men nor women being less than 40% of the total number. Article 5, Section 4, Requirements of a Political Party. A political party must have constitution and bylaws, well-defined platforms including women's agenda. Article 5, Section 4, uh, one E, the party structure, provided that neither men nor women are not less than 40% of the total number. We have reservations on Article 6, Section 17, providing for at least 10% of the nominees in the list shall preferably be qualified party members who are women. We believe that this does not adequately reflect the aspirations of the Bangsamoro women who, along with their male comrades, valiantly lobbied for the passage of the ball. In this regard, we favor the provision in VTA Bill Number 19 with the same title, which states that each party shall submit a list of nominees alternating between male and female nominees from which party representatives shall be chosen in case they obtain the required number of votes. In Article 6, Section 20, reserved seats and sectoral representatives. We assert that representation should not be limited to one woman only. We propose that it should further be provided that there shall be at least four women in the reserved seats. There is a need to harmonize the maximum age of qualification for the youth representative, which is 25 years under Article 6, Section 8, and 30 under Section 21 of the same article. Article 6, Section 12 in the BOL states that the maximum age should be 30 years of age. On Article 6, Section 12, manner of selection of sectoral representatives, we assert that sectoral representatives in the reserved seats should be endorsed and vetted by accredited, accredited CSOs belonging to the sector she, he will represent in the barn at the regional, provincial, city, or municipal, municipal levels. She, he should also have a proven track record of two to three years of working on the ground. We agree that the selection of non-Moro indigenous peoples, such as Teduray, Lambangian, Dulangan, Manobo, Aromanan, Manobo, Blaan, and Higaonon should adhere to their customary laws and indigenous processes as provided for by Article 6, Section 8 of the BOL, which include the principle of gender equality. We would also like to emphasize that sectoral representatives shall have equal rights, votes, powers as other members of the parliament. At this point, we are rethinking the appointment of the sectoral representatives by the chief minister. This implies that they are disenfranchised in voting for the highest official of the land and vulnerable to being beholden to the appointing power. In this aspect, we hope that this August committee will conduct more consultations to seek the opinion of organized basic sectors to ensure the democratic selection of sectoral representatives. Honorable Madam Chairperson, members of the parliament, let us be judged by our people by being on the right side of history. Provide equal opportunity to our brilliant Bangsamori women, especially the youth, to serve our people to the best of their abilities, same as that of our brilliant Bangsamoro men. And most of all, 
let us be judged by the Almighty Allah on the day of judgment as among those who fulfilled their covenant by creating an enabling environment that allowed the believing Bangsamoro men and women to be protectors of each other who enjoin what is good and forbid what is evil. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, we will now move to Father David Procalia of the Parish Pastoral Council for Responsible Voting. Father, EPCRV. Officers and members of the Bangsamoro Park Parliament, members of the Source Bureau, good, good morning. Our Responsible Council for Responsible Voting, with its acronym PPCRV, is a non-partisan, non-sectarian, non-profit organization affiliated with the Roman Catholic Church in the Philippines. It works to ensure clean, honest, accurate, meaningful, peaceful, known for its champ election, by undertaking three major activities with which, through which its accreditation by the Commission of Elections becomes its mandate namely voters' education, poll watching, and an official parallel count through which it regards the proposed Bangsamoro Electoral Code. Number one, PPCRV appreciates the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. PPCRV supports every effort undertaken in forging and promoting the image of PARM as an ex excellent model of autonomy and good governance in contrast to its previously tarnished image as the cheating capital of election in the country and a heaven of violence, graft, and corruption. This would be confirmed by the existence of the PPS of Ivarm Regional Coalition, which I had. Initially constituted by the 14 Bangsamoro civil society organizations, participating as non-partisan monitors in the election since 2007, until the recently concluded May 9, 2022 national and local elections. Its presence was also visible as observers in the Bangsamoro Organic Law and Magindanao plebiscites. Second, PP survey welcomes the proposed Bangsamoro electoral code with op optimism as it trailblazes the legal path in resolving the challenges posed by its parliamentary form of governance Existing, existing in a unitary state with presidential form of government. government. Third, PP survey commits to assist BARM in the pursuit of its electoral reform through the mandate accredited by, uh, granted by the accreditation of the commissions, which forms the legal ground of its participation in electoral activities. A. It will contribute its effort in informing the Bangsamoro electorate through its voters' education. Second, on the conduct of poll watching under Article 10, Election Administration, Chapter 2, Sections 4 to 13, it observes on polling places, it does not provide for the emergency accessible polling places for the vulnerable sectors, the PWDs, senior citizens, and heavily parked at women. Chapter 2 of Section 26 provides for other watchers, particularly for the duly accredited citizens arm of the Commission, with the rights and duties as provided for in Section 25. EPCRV requests for clarification on matters of accreditation. After being duly accredited by the Commission, does it need to obtain separate accreditation from the Bangsamoro Electoral Code? Uh, electoral office for a specific participation in BARM elections. On matters of the conduct of the unofficial count, it seeks clarification. One, chapter two, section 49 on the disposition of election, re election returns for the conduct of the unofficial parallel count as mandated by the commission. How many election returns are to be generated? Will the truly accredited citizens arm be given a copy to be used in the conduct of the parallel count? Chapter 2, Section 50 on the certificate of the number of votes to be issued 
to what source upon request. Could a provision be included so as to specifically state that the duly citizens arm be issued certificate of the number of votes? Chapter 2, Section 64, on watchers during canvas, there is no mention of a watcher from truly accredited citizens arm. It only provides specific watcher for candidate, political party, or coalition of parties. PP Service 6, that the Bang Samoro Electoral Office considers the above issues in the general instruction and elections in the Bang Samoro, so as to provide clear guidelines on the accredited citizens' arm in accomplishing its mandate, especially on the unofficial parallel count. PP Survey, headed by our national chairperson, Madam Anna Singson, with our national chairperson emeritus, Madam Ambassador Henrietta Tita de Villa, together with my colleague here in the PP Survey, Attorney Van de la Cruz and Sir Jude Chow. We express our gratitude to the Bang Samoro Transition Authority for the invitation to his committee rules. It's a great honor to be part of this public consultation. Thank you and may God bless us all. May God bless Bang Samoro, Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Thank you, uh, Father Procalia. We will now hear from Attorney Ona Caritos uh, from the Legal Network for Truthful Elections, Orlante. Hello. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, we would like to express our deep gratitude for inviting us today and for giving us a trust to be able to give our own comments towards the, um, BTA, the BTA Bill number 29. And we would like to commend um, the drafters of the code because we know um, the difficult process of establishing a new electoral code for such uh, a unique system, electoral system in the country. Um, we actually have specific specific comments per provision, but of course, in the interest of time, um, we will present our general um, comments instead for today, but we have submitted our um, per provision comments to the Secretariat. Um, so before anything, we would like to um, introduce Lente, so next slide, please. So Lente has been um, a staunch electoral monitoring organization since its creation. Um, and it has been in it has been present in every election since the 2007 elections. And of course, the recently concluded plebiscite um, this year. Um, for our monitoring efforts, we have been um, co-developing. Uh, we have been present in all of our elections, making sure that we have accountable, transparent, and inclusive elections that creates public confidence in our elections. Um, specifically for the BARM um, context, we have been doing projects, engagements, particularly co-developing instructional materials with the Ministry of Basic Higher and Technical Education on the Bangsamoro history and the parliamentary system, as well as capacity building for CSOs based in the Bangsamoro on the parliamentary system. And of course, we have provided technical assistance on the proposed Bangsamoro electoral code. Next slide, please. Um, so as mentioned, over the past three years, we have been working through um, different consultations with different stakeholders, including, of course, members of our parliament. So before moving on, we would like to express our gratitude again to all, of, all members of parliament who um, answered our calls when we asked for consultations and one-on-one -on -one meetings and for reaching out to us when you um, had specific questions or recommendations for the Bangsamoro Electoral Code. Um, aside from that, we also were able to talk to stakeholders as well as for in the recently concluded national and local elections, we were able to do a monitoring of the election specifically for the Bangsamoro um, region. Next slide, please. So for our highlights, um, starting with the Bangsamoro Electoral Office, um, we would want we would, we're hoping for more emphasis on the needs of our vulnerable sectors. We actually recommend the creation of a vulnerable sector bureau um, in relation to Article 3 of BTA Bill number 29. So it could be a sp separate bureau, particularly targeting our vulnerable sectors in BARM because we do understand that there are um, multiple numbers and um, we want to give emphasis on making sure 
that elections, voting, and running for positions would be more accessible for our vulnerable sectors. Um, secondly, we want to ensure that the Bangsamoro Electoral Office has enough resources, particularly a suitable office space at the Office of the City and Municipal Election Officers. So this would be in um, conjunction with bills currently filed with the Congress and Senate. So next slide, please. And so this is a sample um, by COMELEC, um, specifically to create the Bangsamoro Electoral Office. And we understand and we recommend that, that a similar resolution will also be um, granted or uh, published by COMELEC um, to ensure the reorganization of the Bangsamoro Electoral Office will fulfill the mandates of our constitution. So a similar resolution might be required to ensure the restructuring of the Bangsamoro Electoral Office um, will fully be um, safe uh, for constitutional um, questions. Next slide, please. So again, this is also our suggestion to strengthen the Bangsamoro Electoral Office. We join actually the bill, we commend that there is actually a need to strengthen the operations of election administration in BARM, um, not just in BARM, but actually in the entire Philippines. So we actually commend the proposal to, strong, to strengthen and to ensure, to give more resources to our electoral offices. And we would want to also um, direct members of the BTA to um, bills currently filed in Congress and Senate on the strengthening of the COMELEC um, integ integrity, uh, COMELEC integrity Bill, which proposes to strengthen the COMELEC offices. So this can actually also be good resource materials for um, consideration for the Bangsamoro Electoral Office. Next slide, please. For the parliamentary system, and we'll give more specific um, recommendations here later on, um, but of particular note here would be having a clear step-by-step -step process for the allocation of our seats at the Bangsamoro um, Parliament, particularly for the 50%. Um, we will show later a um, sample provision which could be copied or could be um, considered in drafting the step-by-step -step process. Aside from that, we recommend a lower threshold instead of 4% to a 2.5% threshold, um, just to have more inclusive elections to getting especially more uh, parties involved in the Bangsamoro process. We would also recommend having um, or eliminating the seat cap um, just so that we have stronger parties in BARM, um, particularly in the parliamentary elections. Thus, it is very important to have very strong political parties. So having a seat cap might actually limit the strength of our parties and it might actually, um, it won't, the representation of our votes might not be as proportional if we include the seat cap. Secondly, we also recommend a zipper list or a zebra list and to have a clear gender quota. Um, our proposal is actually at the 50%. Um, gender quota with the zipper list included there. We also provided four options for our reserved and sectoral representatives on how um, this can actually be provided to our vulnerable sectors. We will go over each option or at least a general overview of the options later on. Third, we are recommending anti-political dynasty provisions in the list of nominees for our political parties, um, just because this will be aligned with the political dynasty provision in the local government code. Fourth, we actually are hoping for level of requirements for parties to implement it, but in a transitory period, particularly requiring offices, memberships, percentage of sectors as part of the memberships of the political party, and requiring the fielding of district representatives. And for equal representation, we would want to, we were hoping to include requirements in our party com committees for women sectors and provincial representation. And lastly, for, part, for the parliamentary system, we are hoping that a membership book is required so that this will operationalize the anti-turncoat provisions found in the Bangsamoro Organic Law. Next slide, please. For the general election electoral provisions, we are hoping that Bang, the Bangsamoro Electoral Office is able to look into procuring space and time to be raffled to our um, electoral candidates and parties. Um, second, we all should join um, the um, call for having a political party subsidy fund. And we are hoping for the to have more functions of the Bangsamoro Electoral Office to ensure a more inclusive process, process for voting 
and for the gaining of information related to the exercise of our electoral rights. And lastly, we are proposing accessible voting through the implementation of the requirement of candidate logos and photos on election propaganda and campaign materials as well as our ballots um, for the Bangsamoro region. Next slide, please. So going into more specific recommendations on the introductory provisions, um, next slide. Um, we've noticed that in the definition portion, um, it could have more definitions that were um, later on defined in other parts of the code. However, of particular note, we hope that um, definitions for candidates, political parties, and vulnerable sectors will be included in this um, portion of the electoral code, as well as a clear definition for regional parties, for voting centers, and for polling places. And we would hope that the um, BTA would also consider changing the definition of the parliament elections to conform with the BOL, particularly with the wording that district representatives shall not be shall be uh, not more than 40 percent and for sectors to be at least 10 percent. So this connotes that um, the numbers for district representatives it cannot be higher than 40 percent but for um, district seats, it can actually be increased to more than 10% because it is a minimum as worded in our Bangsamore Organic Law. Next slide, please. So we'll move into other specific recommendations for our electoral office, the bureaus, and the Bangsamoro Parliament Electoral Tribunal. Next slide, please. So we welcome actually what was mentioned earlier that there was um, a recognition that the reorganization of the Bangsamoro Electoral Office um, is beyond the power of the BTA or parliament. Um, however, this actually may be done via a common resolution, as mentioned earlier, um, as Comalic will have its jurisdiction over its own electoral offices. So we call on the Bangsamoro Transition Authority to have a better coordination with Comalic so that they can actually adopt um, the needed recommendations found in our um, bill number 29. Also, some provisions here can actually be part of the IRR, Internal Rules and Regulations. Um, this will give the Bangsamoro Electoral Office enough discretion because it might be difficult to codify all of the specific um, functions or all of the specific formats as it might um, handcuff our Bangsamoro Electoral Office without having um, a lot of discretion when it comes to its oper oper operations. Um, lastly, we are calling for the Bangsamoro Electoral Office to improve its capacity to collect data, particularly data on the number of registered and actual voters for our vulnerable sectors. This will allow the office as well as the Commission on Elections to actually propose activities and projects that will specifically target um, areas um, of need for our vulnerable sectors. Um, next slide, please. So for the Bangsamoro Parliament Electoral Tribunal, the term sole judge may not be an accurate term because it might um, have constitutional issues. This could be, however, enhanced to make it more procedural in terms of sounding. I think the fear here is it might um, hit on the, the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, particularly because of the term sole judge, which is actually found in the Constitution, but it might be difficult to have in a um, national law or even a, a regional law. Additionally, um, it might be good to clarify who will actually appoint the retired RTC judge um, who will who is actually sitting as part of the tribunal. Um, and Section 3 might also uh, include a possible conflict of, of interest on the part of the chief electoral officer as he is both um, part of the tribunal but at the same time potentially part of um, an officer who is being questioned by the tribunal itself. Next slide, please. So we have specific um, recommendations for the political party, for the provisions um, affecting political parties. Next slide, please. Um, as mentioned, we are hoping for four requirements to be imposed on our political parties, um, but in a transitory process. So the reason for the transitory process is that we um, understand that there might not be a lot of strong political parties for the Bangsamoro region who can compete and um, be able to um, comply with all of the requirements by the time of the first election for the Bangsamoro. So we've um, made it in a transitory process to allow parties to actually develop over the course of the next nine years. Um, the first requirement is a requirement of an office. For the first election, as mentioned, there will be no requirement. For the second election, we propose that parties should have an office in a majority of provinces in the Bangsamoro region. 
and for the third election, an office in all provinces in Barn. For the membership requirement, um, again, for the first election, no requirement. For the second election, we are proposing that parties should have at least 100 members in a majority of provinces in Barm, and by the third election, in all provinces of Barm. Um, on the requirement on sectoral membership, um, again, no requirement for the first election. But on the second election, we are hoping that parties are required at least 6% of their members must be part of our vulnerable sectors as specified by the organic law, with 1% each from the each specified sector as listed in our Bangsamoa organic law. And in the third election, to increase the percentage requirement to 12% of all its members must come from um, vulnerable sectors. And lastly, we are hoping to have um, an additional requirement of fielding district candidates. Um, again, the importance of having strong parties in Barm um, cannot be understated. Um, we, it's hard for us to look at the parliamentary elections as three fragmented positions when in fact they're, they're function as one government. So it is important to connect each of the um, positions, the sectors, the district representatives and the party representatives because if we have fragmented parties, um, you might have a scenario wherein you have a weak parliament which could create um, constant upheaval of the Pangsamoria parliament. So we're hoping that by the second election, political parties are required to field district candidates in one third of the districts and by the third election in a majority of districts of form. Um, next slide, please. Um, we're hoping that a membership book is also required to make the anti-political turncoat provision enforceable. So this will be submitted six months before the election. And for you to become a nominee, you have to be part of this membership book. Um, and to also consider polit anti-political dynasty provisions, um, taking the same wording or the same definition as defined by Congress in the SK Reform Act and Bill Number uh, and Bill Number Thirty or the Local Government Act um, of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority. Next slide, please. Um, so we'll show you a, brief, a little bit of data. This is data collected from the 2022 national local elections for the bar monitoring conducted by Lente. Um, one fear going into our consultations was that there might not be enough new candidates um, if we have an anti-political dynasty provision. But at least based on the monitoring that we were able to conduct, we were able to find that there were 61.27% 61 of our candidates in the 2022 um, elections in BARM were actually new candidates. Next slide, please. Again, we were hoping to ensure equal representation of women in sectors particularly by requiring minimum membership of women um, in party committees and by requiring representatives from every province in the delegates committee. Again, we call on a 50% quota for women and to require the nominee list to be via zipper or zebra system. If ever it will be a lesser quota system, we were hoping that, for example, if in the provision it's a 10% requirement, there should also be an accompanying requirement that in every 10 um, candidates, one should be a woman. So we have to, just is, just to ensure that not all women um, nominees will be placed at the bottom of the list. Um, lastly, for substitution or filing of vacancy, the person must be um, of the same gender or sector. So this will ensure that no loophole will become, um, will endanger equal representation. Next slide, please. So this is our proposed um, provision when it comes to the step-by-step -step process for allocating of seats. Um, it's important to highlight the importance of this provision because without a step-by-step -step process, there's danger of further litigation to the Supreme Court if political parties are not aware of how their votes are actually be translated into actual seats. So this is our recommendation, um, recommended provision for the step-by-step -step process. Um, it goes with a 2.5% threshold, as well as a 50% zipper list for nominees, as well as a closed list of nominees um, aligned with bill number nine, bill number 29. Next slide, please. So I'll, I'll skip these slides. These are the slides going through how each paragraph of the provision can actually be implemented by a calculation. So this is the, the example of that. I'll skip this slide for interest of time. Um, these are the four options when it comes to um, how reserved seats may be allocated. Um, next, um, next slide, please. 
the first option currently right now is can cabinet assigns after the elections. This is currently found in bill number 29. Um, the second option, next slide please, is, um, is when separate reserve seat, uh, there are separate reserve seat lists and the majority party which gets the most number of votes in the election will also be awarded the majority, the seats for the vulnerable sectors. This is currently found in bill number 19, also filed in the BTA. So these are two of the four options that we can actually consider when it comes to reserve seats. For option C, it is vote where voters vote directly. This is similar to our party list system when any person can actually vote for um, their specific party for vulnerable sector. Option D would be to have separate elections for each sector, meaning you will have um, women voting for women, traditional leaders voting for traditional leaders, the youth voting for the youth. Um, what can be considered for this option is that you can use existing structures for certain sec sectors, such as the SK for the youth um, seat. So right now we have provincial seats for the SK. So you can they can vote amongst themselves who can be the regional representative for youth in the sector. Also, it can also we can also look into the indigenous people mandatory representative as a potential example or system for the non-moral indigenous people representative. Next slide, please. Um, so I'll skip this slide because I think I don't have much time. Um, so again, for the party, uh, it might be difficult to have specific um Qualifications for the party arbitral committee. If there would be a specific qualification, we recommend that it should also have financial qualifications because it relates to the examination of financial accounts. Um, next slide, please. Um, for the political party subsidy fund, we recommend a more robust provision, particularly one including safeguards to ensure proper use, such as accounting requirements. And two, we propose two types of funds. One fund for party development. This is for activities such as the hiring of staff, research, policy development, and support of political participation, which can be direct, given directly to the party and available for election and non-election years. And we can also look into a campaign expenditure fund, which can be used through the given of giving of subsidized media access in use of government properties for rallies and postage. This can be given to the Bangsamoro Electoral Office to be raffled equally um, to our political parties. Next slide, please. Attorney Africa, uh, 20 minutes is up. So, uh, we will give you the... additional minutes, uh, but at this point, we'd like to recognize uh, Secretary Galvez of OPAPRU. Good morning, sir. And I saw Yusek Bishano as well. Newly reappointed. <laughs> Congratulations for, and welcome to the uh, uh, public consultation on BTA Bill number 29. Um, Tony Africa will give you, we will be generous and we will give you additional five minutes but uh, that would be the last um so we understand in the interest of time um thank extension. you for the extension but we understand we would like to give more opportunities for some of the other resource speakers um we actually provided copies of the powerpoint so if you'd want to have more questions we are more than open to receive any consultations or any questions thrown our way um and we hope that you consider all of our recommendations and again we would thank everyone for giving us this wonderful opportunity and time to produce an electoral book. Okay. Thank you then, uh, Attorney Africa. We will now move to the next presenter. May we call on Dr. Socorro Reyes, uh, Center for Legislative Development of De La Salle Institute of Governance. Thank you very much, Ms. Chair, for this opportunity. The electoral system is one of the key structural factors that limits or enhances the chances of women candidates to run and win seats in elected legislative bodies at the local, regional, or international levels. In the broad sense, electoral system refers to the entire electoral process 
including provisions concerning electoral rights and election administration, and in a narrow sense, electoral systems regulate the means by which voters express their political preferences and how votes are translated into seats. Several international and national legal and policy frameworks provide a basis for increasing women's political representation and participation through a review and reform of electoral systems. The introduction of quotas and gender mainstreaming in political parties. Among these are the convention and the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women of 1979, the Beijing Platform for Action of 1995, the UN General Assembly Resolution of 2011, and the Philippine Magna Carta of Women signed in 2009. The proposed electoral code for BARM is a comprehensive, substantive document, and so much time and effort must have been poured into its completion. BARM is unique, as it is the country's first parliamentary system of government and the first to adopt a mixed electoral system that combines proportional representation of political parties, individual district election of members of parliament, sectoral representation, and reserved seats for marginalized groups. BARM offers us the rare opportunity to reform the way we elect candidates to enhance gender equality and women's political representation and participation in legislatures. We should seize the moment. This position paper will focus on the following key provisions and suggest language that can promote gender equality and women's rights. Article 2, Section 7, Bangsa More Electoral Office, suggests to include in powers and functions, collect sex disabled data of voters in elections, plebiscites, and other electoral exercises. Article 5, Political Party, Section 4, Paragraph 1, suggests to include in requirements of a political party. The manner of nomination of candidates in parliamentary elections shall ensure equal representation of women and men. Article 6, elective positions in parliament, section 17, close list nominees. The suggested language is, the list of nominees for each party shall be a closed list, zipper style, with women and men alternating in the ticket. The order of nominees cannot be changed by the political party in determining who can sit in parliament from among the nominees, except if a sitting member is found to have breached party loyalty or violated party rules and policies. Among the top 15 countries in the number of women in national parliaments, the following seven countries use the closed party list zipper system. Rwanda, Namibia, Sweden, South Africa, Finland, Norway, and Mozambique. Article 6, Section 14, Manner of Allocation of the Party Representation Seats. The suggestion is only the parties receiving at least 5%, not 4%, of the total values cast for the party system elections shall be entitled to one guaranteed seat. <coughs> Sorry. Legal threshold refers to the minimum number of votes that a party has to win in an election in order to qualify for a seat in parliament. It is argued that high threshold prevents the proliferation of small parties and thus avoid political fragmentation. Formal thresholds are provided in constitutional and legal provisions, such as the case in Germany and New Zealand, where political parties must obtain at least 5% of the votes cast to qualify for parliamentary representation. Article 13, Section 3, Transitory Provisions. The suggestion is six months before, not after, the last parliamentary elections, BTA shall by law establish a par political party subsidy fund which will be used to augment the operating funds of accredited political parties provided they include in their list of nominees 50% women candidates. In conclusion, it is essential to consider broader structural factors that are not directly captured through electoral system reform, but which can nonetheless serve to impede or facilitate the goal of giving women equal representation with men 
in legislatures and in other elective posts. In other words, electoral systems, re electoral system reform should be viewed as a necessary but not sufficient condition as attention must also be given to the internal governance mechanisms of political parties. Well-conceived electoral reform through such time-tested measures as the introduction of CLPR systems have a great deal of potential to nurture stronger and more coherent parties. But if electoral system reform is to succeed in the goal of balancing gender representation in the legislature, it is essential as well to ensure the nurturing of gender sensitive and responsive political parties. This is the double challenge faced by gender advocates, especially in countries like the Philippines, where political parties are generally weak, male dominated, and sexist. Finally, an electoral code in a democracy cannot and should not ignore half of its voting population. To do it is to lose on the competence, strengths, and perspectives women bring for a stable, working democracy. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sok Reyes. Uh, may we now hear from the National President of the Integrated Bar of the Philippines, Tony Estrada. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair, and uh, good morning and to all the members of this Honorable Committee. Thank you for inviting uh, the Integrated Bar of the Philippines to this uh, consultation process. So the Integrated Bar of the Philippines, being the mandatory organization of lawyers in the Philippines, has uh, had already uh, several also uh, programs assisting uh, the Bangsamoro Transitional Government, uh, one of which was in April, where we... Uh, held a uh, training with our uh, IDP members in Bangsamoro together with our uh, Women's uh, Commission on uh, uh, survivors uh, focused approach on, uh, on gender-based violence. And also uh, we have conducted two uh, webinars already on uh, the Sharia uh, on uh, introducing uh, the uh, Sharia to our different members all throughout the Philippines uh, with the uh, instruction also from the Supreme Court to one day integrate uh, all lawyers, both uh, uh, those we regard as regular lawyers and Sharia lawyers now, to only one organization, the Integrated Bar of the Philippines, where all will become members. And so, um, uh, of course, we also are very much invested in uh, ensuring uh, uh, that there is free, fair, and honest, and credible elections. And, though, and so the Integrated Bar of the Philippines has been uh, partnering with all our uh, um, uh, election watchdogs and even the COMELEC. During the last elections, we have signed a memorandum of agreement with the Commission on Elections to render our free legal assistance, uh, not just to the uh, officers of the COMELEC, who are uh, also... Uh, in need of uh, legal assistance, especially the election officers. So the last election, we were we made our uh, legal aid offices available to the election officers and also uh, to our partners, the law enforcement and our election watchdogs, more uh, specifically uh, Lente, which has been our partner for the longest time. But more importantly also to the electorate, to the people uh, who uh, whom all powers emanate from. And so uh, last election, we mounted our uh, Bogado para sa Botanting Filipino. And uh, perhaps one of the uh, observations that we would like to forward also is uh, we've made uh, this observation in our existing election laws that uh, while we understand these frameworks are for uh, uh, to establishing the uh, processes of our electoral uh, process, but sometimes uh, uh, we've noticed that it is missing, you know, not just uh, uh, the proposed law, but our existing laws uh, are is missing and sometimes forget that uh, the most important uh, element of the election supposed to be are the people, the, the electorate. And so we will 
uh, highly suggest that uh, uh, while we are in the process of now create, crafting this law, that it includes uh, provisions uh, which highlight uh, the protection of uh, the electorate. No? In the last election, for example, uh, we that is why we mounted such program because there is uh, a scarcity of uh, uh, relief no? to those the voting public to go to when their right to vote is uh, uh, in question or being violated. Our candidates have so many lawyers, battery of lawyers. Our government uh, who who manages our election has lawyers, but the the voting public uh, do not have their lawyers, and so the IBP will also be very much willing to assist in this manner. Um, and also, uh, Madam Chair, uh, we uh, being the sentinel of law and democracy. Uh, we recognize also the importance of the, the crafting of this law to be in harmony with our existing laws and uh, especially the constitution. And so we uh, we have uh, just uh, two uh, provisions uh, which we have uh, observed that might be in conflict with our constitution and uh, perhaps uh, would be would need some recrafting. Uh, one of which is uh, section, Article 2, Section 8, Paragraph O of the proposed, proposed uh, BEC, uh, which uh, provides uh, uh, as a power of the uh, BEC to investigate anomalies in the surge of list of registered voters and cause its delisting. Uh, it is sub respectfully submitted, Madam Chair, that uh, under the uh, 1987 Constitution, the the power to uh, pass upon a person's right to vote is something that is uh, not delegated or given to the even to the Commission on Elections, but uh, rather is a uh, judicial uh, action. So in the present law, our election, omnibus election code, these matters are uh, are properly lodged in our uh, regular courts, either the municipal trial courts or the regional trial courts. And so there might be a need to revisit uh, this uh, uh, proposed provision uh, in order as to not uh, possibly uh, be in conflict with the constitution. Uh, one other provision, Madam Chair, is Article uh, 4, Section 1, as mentioned already by Attorney uh, EF, no? uh, which uh, mentions that uh, uh, the, the Electoral Committee shall become the sole judge on uh, electoral contests no? pertaining to the election and the returns on elections uh, are being, being done. Uh, this we also submit, Madam Chair, uh, is is a power not also given to the COMELEC, which it cannot also uh, delegate uh, further because, again, this is uh, within the powers of the judicial branch of government to determine such contests. And in, uh, presently, uh, con election protests under the election code are lodged also in our uh, regular courts, either the municipal trial courts or the regional trial courts. So while we understand it provides that it may be, uh, as may be delegated rather, so uh, we also propose that the said provision be revisited in order to harmonize with the constitution and the present law. On a more personal note, Madam Chair, and being a Mindanawan myself, I hail from uh, Bukidnon, Malay Balay Bukidnon. Uh, I'm a member of the Bukidnon Tagulwanan tribe, an indigenous cultural community in Malay Balay City. I am very, I am very happy and congratulate uh, the Bangsa Marit Transitional Government on this effort, on which uh, where uh, self-governance uh, and uh, uh, the right to self-determination is really uh, being pursued, and. Uh, we take uh, pride in uh, our brothers and sisters for being able to pursue uh, the right to self-governance and to the right to self-determination. 
and congratulations to everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Maraming salamat, Atty. Estrada. Uh, we now call on the Ateneo School of Government, uh, Sir Atty. Emilio Marañon the third. Uh, but before that, we would like to acknowledge the presence of Father Jerome Ceciliano of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines. Father, please join us here uh, as he will also be presenting their position later. Uh, please proceed, Attorney Maranyan. Okay. Uh, magandang umaga po. Good morning sa inyong lahat. So, I am an election lawyer, so I have extensively practiced na Bangsamoro, of course. But I am here to represent rather the Ateneo School of Government because I'm part of, I, I am a research fellow under their Access Bangsamoro project. So una, una po, I'll start siguro with, uh, by discussing the hierarchy of election laws. So of course, ang pinakamataas, we have the constitution, so that's our prime election law. And then under it, we have national election law, which is the omnibus election code, at saka akanya mga amendments. So ang unang question na itatanong natin po, saan pipwesto, saan, saan malalagay ngayon yung Bangsamoro Electoral Code? Will it be treated under the national election law? Will it be treated similar to a local government legis legislation? And very important question as an election lawyer is if in case of conflict, ano po yung magpe-prevail? Just to give you an example, um, basic example of conflict, for example, is premature campaigning. The concept of premature campaigning has already been repealed by Congress. However, in the Bangsamoro Electoral Code, binalik po ninyo. Hindi ko alam kung bakit gusto ninyo makulong pag may premature campaigning. So hindi ko alam yun. Second, coercion of subordinates. Andyan pa rin po siya sa Section 1D Number one and two, that provision has already been repealed by Republic Act number 7890 as held in the case of Javier versus Comelec. So, wala na po yan, but binalik po natin. So, question, if wala na po sa national laws, pero meron pa sa Bangsamoro Electoral Code, which one will prevail? It will even go back to the question, can the Bangsamoro Parliament actually legislate criminal laws? na pwede kang makulong. So that, that's another question that we need to tackle. Also po, we have to, my personal position is that the Bangsamoro Electoral Code cannot supplant, change, expand the national election laws. It must be remembered that notwithstanding the authority given by Congress to the Parliament, it is not equivalent to a free hand on the part of the Bangsamoro Parliament to actually change totally the our election laws. Because at the end of the day, not because na may Bangsamoro Electoral Code na, it doesn't mean hindi na po nag apply yung Omnibus Election Code. mag apply pa rin po yan. So the question is, papaano ngayon po yan na meron kang constitution, meron kang national election laws, meron ka pang Bangsamoro Electoral Code. So you end up with a, with a system that is very confusing. And as we all know, if we have a system that is confusing, the only people who will be happy with that will be us election lawyers kasi kikita po kami. But otherwise, it will, dis it will be disadvantageous to all uh, politicians and candidates. Kayo po ang lugi dyan, hindi po kaming mga abogado or third-party observers. Okay? Another, um, another observation po, I find it, to be honest, voluminous and confusing because... Even po sa practice na mga abogado, not all lawyers actually can, fra can practice election law. There, there are at least before six, but kayon because of appointment na sa COMELEC and all other branches of government, parang tatlo na lang ata natitira na nagpa-practice ng election law. But even with that, very confusing pa rin po pag binasa ninyo. So for example, um, ang suggestion ko, there are matters that might be Instead na ilagay po sa Bangsamoro Electoral Code, baka pwede na lang po sa resolution ng COMELEC o ng BEO because it will give the BEO more flexibility. Because for example, merong provision na hindi pala maganda. So instead of going through the process of amending the Electoral Code, 
we might as well just issue a resolution, di ba? So I think much of, a lot of the provisions in the electoral code actually can be rather provided for in a resolution rather than be placed in an electoral code. Another one. Another very important point then is that apart from the fact that we want to push, of course, for electoral reforms, I am an advocate for that. But at the end of the day, we should be ready to defend this before the Supreme Court. Because I'm very certain that the moment we pass an electoral code, someone will go up to the Supreme Court and question the legality or the constitutionality of the electoral code. What I'm trying to say is that we should come up with an electoral code na kaya po nating depensahan sa Korte Suprema. You know, as much as we want to be adventurous and to be ideal about the whole process, but at the end of the day, we must confine ourselves within the bounds of the Constitution and our national election laws. One basic concept na, which I find in a way problematic but baka pwedeng gawa ng paraan is that under the Constitution, the concept of Pomelec is very dictatorial. Why? Because when you read the Constitution, the power of the Pomelec is concentrated to seven people. That's the chairman and six commissioners. Even let's say that the Pomelec, 5,000 po yung empleyado niya, but at the end of the day, the power of the Pomelec is exercised by only six people. So the question is, can this power which is exclusively vested to seven people, be severed and ibibigay natin sa BEO. So that's another question. That's a legal question. I can describe the power of Comelec as monolithic, ibig sabihin buo, indivisible, hindi pwedeng hatiin, and it cannot be redelegated. Meaning, kung ano yung function ng Comelec and Bank, hindi mo pwedeng tanggalin yan at ibigay elsewhere. Okay? Without amending the Constitution. Okay? So, and another black limitation natin is that, of course, there's a constitutional rule that what has been delegated cannot be delegated further. So the power being exercised by the Comelec is already delegated by nature. So ang question is, pwede mo ba bang i-delegate further yan? So that's another possible constitutional issue. Okay? So ang position ko is because of this pro prohibition on further delegation, even if even if COMELEC will consent, kahit pumayag ang COMELEC, ibibigay namin yan. But the, the rule still prohibits, even with consent, bawal pa rin po yung delegation. Okay? Another, registration of political parties. Under the law, under the Constitution rather, the power to register political parties is exclusive to the COMELEC. That's in Article 9C, Section 2 the power to register political parties after sufficient publication. So the question is, pwede bang tanggalin sa COMELEC at ibigay sa BEO? So that's another constitutional issue that we need, for example, to tackle. Also, ang aking suggestion is instead of coming up with a new set of requirements, why not harmonize and align new requirements with the requirements of COMELEC? So, for example, sa political parties, that's Rule 32 of the 1993 Comelec Rules Procedure. And also Section 2, Number 5 of Article 9C of the 1987 Constitution. The reason for harmonizing po is para hindi tayo mag-invento ng panibagong rules. The BO can simply take advantage of the existing jurisprudence ng Comelec, existing procedure, para hindi na po manibago. And of course, one, for example, one requirement is Dapat 10,000 daw yung members mo. That rule does not even exist in the COMELEC. And I'm telling you, as a, as a having registered so many political parties, matiniwala walang papasap po kung kung saan pong libo yung members ninyo. Masyadong mahirap. Even 1,000 is very difficult. 10,000, wala pong papasa. Sigurado po ako niyan. Okay? Tapos another one is... Um, uh, ang suggestion ko naman, instead of to resolve this constitutional issue, instead of giving the BEO the power to actually accredit, ang suggestion ko is to rather make the BEO as the reception and screening committee of the Comelec main office with the power to recommend whether to approve or not 
But nonetheless, it still, kailangan pa rin po idakit yan sa Comelec Division just to comply with the 1987 Constitution. Okay? Another one. Um, eto napaka-importante and I did not know bakit wala po sa draft. Ang question, napaka-importante. How about those political parties which are already registered with the Comelec? What will happen po? For example, uh, UBJP already registered with the COMELEC. So the question is, will you require them to register again at the BEO? The, the rule is very simple. The spring cannot rise above its source. If it has already been approved by the COMELEC and bank, the COMELEC division, why would you require them to register again at a lesser office? So there has to be a provision as regards, a transitory provision on how do you actually resolve political parties registered or with constituency in the barn. Kailangan ma-resolve yan, mailagay po yan sa electoral code. Okay? Ang, tapos, ang assessment ko with the, with the BO, the BO is a super and ultra powerful that is even more powerful than the COMLEC itself. Because it exercises administrative, quasi-judicial, judicial powers, quasi-executive, quasi-administrative. Bakit? Example, as mentioned by by by, uh, by uh, our IBP president, by power shot to delist registered voters under the constitution, the power to delist can only be done by courts. I know for a fact that Comelec has been doing ex parte delisting. Ibig sabihin yung Comelec mismo nagdi-delist. But that act of Comelec has yet to be sustained by the Supreme Court. Because if you read the Constitution, the question as regards the right to vote is, is can only be exercised by courts. Korte lang po yan. Through an exclusion proceeding, you go and file a case before the municipal trial court. Hindi pwede mag-automatic na magtanggal ka lang ng boto. But the court gives the video of the power to delist. Can you imagine, hindi ka natatakot? pwedeng i-delist ng COMELEC yung buong registered voter ng isang municipality, for example. So, that, that's another one. Of course, jurisdiction over election contest, very, very dangerous. The Bangsamoro Parliament Electoral Tribunal is for me facially unconstitutional. Why? Because under the 1987 Constitution, the exclusive and and original jurisdiction over elective regional officials is with the COMELEC division. So ang tanong, can you actually transfer the jurisdiction from the COMELEC division to the BEO without amending the constitution? So that's a very um, dangerous provision. Another one is, of course, the jurisdiction of the BEO as, re as regards Election contest ng Parliament, Regional, Provincial, and City Officials. That's in Chapter 3, Section 7. Under the Constitution, that's with the courts. Regional Trial Court for Municipal Officials. Pag-Provincial sa COMELEC po. So, kanyang ililipat mo from COMELEC and from courts, ililipat mo sa BEO without amending the Constitution. Remember, these jurisdictions are defined in the Constitution. Hindi po yan sa batas lang. Sa Constitution po yan. So you cannot alter that by just passing the Electoral Code. So, and then again, um, lastly, of course, yung mga repealed provisions under the Omnibus Election Code and other election laws, you, you need to study that because it appears that much of the provisions of the Bangsamoro Electoral Code were simply copied from the Omnibus Election Code, but many of the provisions actually have already been repealed by Congress. So, marami na rin po na declare na unconstitutional, pero nakikita pa rin po dun sa draft. So, I think we need to study again yung draft and remove those portions that have already been declared uh, either contrary to law or unconstitutional. Thank you very much. Uh, can we just proceed first with our resource persons? Uh, thank you. We will now call on... Um, wait, sorry. Manlipi? Ay, sorry. Tama? Correct? 
Attorney Janet Florita uh, from the Tanggapang Panligal ng Katutubong Pilipina. Attorney. A pleasant morning to the honorable members of the parliament and to all the guests. Magandang umaga po. Considering that we are pressed for time, we will center our comment to the concerns and interests of our indigenous peoples. We would like to put emphasis on the fact that under the parliamentary system of government, one of the most defining characteristics is the supremacy of the legislature, the close connection between the executive and the legislative uh, uh, requirements. The legislative function is conducted through a parliament composed of the members accountable to the people that they represent. A prime minister and the ministers of several executive departments of the, of the government primarily carried out the execution function and are accountable to the parliament to which they belong. Whereas, under the present presidential system, the executive and legislative branches of government are very clearly separated. Furthermore, in a parliamentary system, this division becomes blurred because the executive branch is also of the legislative branch cabinet members being members of the parliament, uh, parliament as well. Hence, the complication brought by politics and other alliances make the difficulty of implementing check and balance between the legislative and executive departments even more pronounced. These factors must be considered in the drafting of the electoral code. Then, in the matter of reserved seats and sectoral representatives, in the context of parliamentary system, the responsibility of filling up reserved seats and sectoral representatives is usually assumed by the majority party. This context may not be in accord with the mandatory representation requirement provided by the law for indigenous peoples and the indigenous cultural communities. And this is the crux of the matter for the indigenous peoples whose ancestral domains fall within the jurisdiction of the BARMM. Curiously, Section 26 provides the determination of the representatives for non-Moro indigenous peoples shall be based on plurality of votes in the elections to be conducted by the parliament for that purpose. The first two obtaining highest numbers of votes shall be elected for the position. This particular provision is certainly not in accordance with the provisions of the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act, which provides specifically that mandatory representative must be an IP, chosen by the people comprising the indigenous peoples of which he or she is to represent. May we put emphasis on the fact that there are several groups of indigenous peoples found in the BARMM. The IPRA particularly provides that they be particularly represented. The fact alone that the code identifies two seats would necessarily violative of the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act, such that we call for a recognition of the existence of this law. We believe that the electoral code, the proposed electoral code, could be harmonized with our existing legislation. That being said, um, we will submit our position paper in writing together with our other comments to the rest of the provisions identified in the proposed bill. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po.
Thank you, Attorney Florita. We will wait for the position paper and the deadline is October 31 po. Um, may we now call on Father Ceciliano of um, CBCP. Father, can you join us here? Or okay, oh, there's no more space? Yep. Are you okay yeah, sitting I, there? I'm good here, ma'am. Okay, Thank sir. you so much. So I'm Father Jerome Ceciliano. I'm representing the CBCP. Uh, the invitation was addressed to the president of the CBCP, Bishop Pablo Virgilio David. Now, my first point, I'd like to emphasize that uh, the CBCP does not have the competency to judge this proposal on the basis of its constitutionality or legality. So we are priests. We are not experts in constitution or law. Second, we'd like also to point out that the church, the Catholic Church, is for the full realization of the autonomy of the Bangsa Moro for as long as the path to this realization is within the bounds of the Constitution and other pertinent laws. Now let me take you to some very specific provisions that uh, we would want to find answers in Article 2, Section 1, it says here that uh, the Bangsamoro Electoral Office shall be established by the Comelec. But the question of the Church is, who will appoint the officials of this office, especially the Chief Electoral Officer and the two Electoral Officers as members? I guess reading these provisions in Article 2, it's not clear who the appointing authority is, especially for uh, the chief electoral official and the two electoral officers as members. And then also in section one, the last part, the last paragraph, it says that uh, notwithstanding the provisions enhancing the Bangsamora Electoral Office, the same office shall be under the control and supervision of the Comelect. Having read that, May I refer you to section 3 about the scope. The scope says that the provisions of this code shall be applicable to any matter relating to the conduct of elections in the BARM, except in cases which are expressly not governed by this code. It appears to me that there is somewhat a divergence in the sense that the emphasis in section 3 ay yung sinasabi po dito na those which are not expressly governed by this code. Pero pagdating naman ho dito sa section 1, kayo naman daw po ay under the control and supervision of the COMELEC. So ibig sabihin yung emphasis dito sa section 3 ay parang nabigyan po tayo ano, ng parang vast powers. But then again, under naman po kayo ng supervision pala at saka control ng COMELEC. And then another thing po, uh, sa Section 5 in Article 2, Qualifications and Appointment, uh, we were expecting that at least magiging klarado na po dito yung appointing authority. But then again, wala po tayong nakita kung sino po yung mag appoint So these are just uh, some of the matters that we found out to be somewhat uh, vague at gustong ma mabigyan po ng kasagutan. Pero ulitin po namin na sa Catholic Church, we are for the full realization of the autonomy of the Bangsa Moro. But uh, then, uh, we are not actually competent uh, to judge uh, this bill uh, on the merits or on the basis of its constitutionality and legality. Maraming salamat po, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, Father Ceciliano. Um, we will now call on uh, the National Movement for Free Elections. Mr. Angel Averria Jr., Chairperson. Magandang tanghali po sa lahat. 
Thank you very much for inviting us to participate in this uh, public consultation. Uh, the National Citizens Movement for Free Elections had earlier submitted its position paper to the BTA par Parliament for consideration uh, as, as you uh, craft the Bangsamoro Election Code. It's quite lengthy, but uh, in the interest of time, let me just uh, read a summary. So the code is intended to um, govern elections for the Parliament of Bangsamoro, autonomous, autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, which under Republic Act 11593 is scheduled to be held with the 2025 national elections. Under Article 7 of Republic Act Number 11054, or the Bangsamoro Organic Law, the parliament will be composed of 80 seats. One half of the members would be representatives of political parties elected through proportional representation system in the BARM. Not more than 40% of parliament would be elected from single member parliament districts and at least 10% are four reserved seats and sectoral representatives. Hold on. Non-Moro indigenous peoples and settler communities would have two reserved seats each while women, youth, Traditional leaders and the ulama would have one sectoral seat each. Namfrao proposed the source that the source or an intent of each provision be indicated in the uh, BEC so that stakeholders would know why some guidelines would be adopted while some would not be. In particular, Namfrao sought clarity on the choice of 4% as the minimum percentage of votes a party must obtain to enter parliament. NAMFRA had illustrated in its uh, position paper how the provisions of the draft BEC may not lead to a proportional representation with a party gaining more seats or less seats compared to the party's share in the total number of votes. NAMFRA proposed revisions to ensure that proportional representation prevail over non-party blocks of independent candidates and to ensure that party seats are proportionally distributed. NAMFOR urged the BTA Parliament to include in the BEC a provision requiring parties to submit a zipper list of women and non-women nominees for its top 10 seats. A zipper list means that the list beginning with a woman nominee would be followed by an unwoman nominee and so on. Uh -huh. Namfrol also proposed a mechanism for election by the sectors mentioned above of their representatives in parliament and for increasing the number of reserved seats in parliament for non moro indigenous groups. Consistent with the trend begun by the Sangguniang Kabataang Reform Law, Namfrol recommended the adoption of the anti-political dynasty provision in said law to the BEC. Candidates must not be related within the second civil degree of consanguinity or affinity to any incumbent elected national official or to any incumbent elected regional, provincial, city, municipal, or barangay official. Based on its decades-long experience as citizens armed and in accordance with international election standards, NAMFOR recommended that the BEC expressly state the electoral processes that citizens arms can observe and the duties that they may conduct. To ensure transparency of the vote count, NAMFOR proposed that copies of the election returns containing the results be distributed to citizens armed and media. Recognizing that the number of volunteers of citizens' arms based in specific municipalities or city may be limited, NAMFO urged allowing volunteers in neighboring areas to serve as poll watchers of citizens' arms. To be consistent with national laws on elections, NAMFO recommended the adoption of guidelines on campaign finance, 
election materials and propaganda, as well as voting and counting. Um, another uh, comment that I'd like to make focuses on the uh, use of automated election systems. We found that in the language of the proposed or the draft uh, BEC, that it refers to the VCM or the PCOS. I would like to point out that the VCM or the PCOS are terms associated with a particular supplier. So there's a danger of legislating a particular supplier to be able to supply the automated election system. We suggest that the provision be use a more technology neutral language rather than just your VCM or PCOS. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, sir. Um, we only have, we have two more uh, resource persons. And I now call on the Philippine Center for Islam and Democracy, Attorney Salma Pier Rasul. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the BARM Parliament, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Greetings of peace. Um, I'll make it short and guaranteed not to give you a stomachache. Okay. Uh, as mentioned earlier by former Secretary Yasmin Lau and tangentially mentioned by Dr. Reyes, The code should support and enable the robust participation of women in governance, particularly considering that the peace process, the comprehensive agreement on BARM, and the Bangsamore Organic Law gained public support much through the tireless efforts of women's groups, women's rights advocates, and civil society organizations supportive of Bangsamore women's political participation. Therefore, in acknowledgement of the contribution made by women towards the establishment of the BARM, there should be concerted effort and commitment to embed opportunities for women's participation in governance. These measures, which are already contained in the BEC, can be um, tweaked a bit to include the following. While we would have wanted 50%, but let's do the doable. Overall composition of the BARM Parliament should, should have at least 30% women as members. Regional parties should adopt the zipper or zebra method in selecting its representatives or nominees to the seats in Parliament. This will guarantee a more gender-balanced gender parliamentary composition. As for the reserved seats, which, which is 10% or Numeric, numerically eight. Half should be women, albeit representing identified sectors. So you have female youth representative, female IP representative, but the total is should be 50% women. As part of the regional party accreditation, at least 30% of candidates fielded by each regional party should be women. That should be a requirement leading to the accreditation of a regional political party. Women should have effective representation in the Bangsamoro elect electoral office. Thus, for each bureau under the BEO, there should have at least one woman appointed as member. Uh, the required bodies, committees for accredit uh, accredited regional political parties should also have at least one woman appointed as member. So your executive committee, parliament, you, for each political party, women should be part as a committee member. And lastly, for elective positions in the BARM parliament, women candidates should be considered for each office to ensure that at least one woman would hold an elective position. We also would like to note that there should be adoption of anti-political dynasty provisions. Despite the specific 
constitutional mandate against political dynasties, there is an absence of any provision enforcing this directive. Since national laws, particularly the SK law, have incorp incorporated anti-political dynasties measures, the code should also perhaps incorporate similar provisions. To promote free and fair elections and enabling representation from a wider base, there should be measures that prevent occurrence of uncontested elections. For this purpose, as part of the accreditation requirements of regional parties, the ability to field candidates in all elected posts should be imposed. This will ensure that the electorate can actually exercise its right to choose and vote for qualified candidates. Now, as mentioned by Mr. Averia, consideration of the other provisions of the proposed code requires information as to the legislative intent. Because without a clear grasp of the underlying purpose for the formulation of such provision, uh, we at PCID are precluded from providing any coherent commentary. But we reserve our right to submit our observations and comments on the necessity and or effectiveness of other provisions, such as, for instance, the obscure provision requiring guardrails. Okay, uh, in ensuring that effective representation of the diverse constituencies in BARM through strengthened democratic processes such as free and fair elections. And lastly, PCID as a partner of NAMFREL adopts the recommendations made by NAMFREL in its position paper. And so, Chris, thank you. Thank you, Attorney Rasul. And uh, certainly not the least, we call on the Mindanao Organization for Social and Economic Progress, or MOSEP, um, Ma'am Mariam Ali. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, um, Madam Chair, and also to the member of the parliament, especially to the Committee on Rules. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuhu. Magandang tanghali po sa ating lahat. Okay, so the Mindanao Organization for Social and Economic Progress Incorporated was organized in 2011 and has been working for social and economic rights for holistic development of communities affected by conflicts in central Mindanao and the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region from the time of its inception. The organization's member of the Board of Trustees have long experience on human rights, advocacies, peace building, local democracy forum, voter education, and values formation, health, humanitarian, and economic intervention. So the Board of Trustees is comprised of one lawyer that serve as legal counsel. So with me here is uh, Undersecretary Attorney Rani Bay Delangalen. Uh, who supported me to uh, provide comments uh, in the Bangsamoro Electoral Code. But before that, MOSEP uh, already conducting uh, voters education since uh, ARM. Uh, and also, we advocate on the Bangsamoro Basic Law on the year 2014 before the creation of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Uh, we are we are also doing voter education uh, and uh, doing monitoring uh, in every elections in ARM, especially on the recent uh, plebiscite. We do monitoring also, and uh, during the 2019 election, we supported the person with disabilities uh, on their participation on election. So. Um, Konte lang po yung mga comments namin for the on on the Bangsamoro Electoral Code. So I I will read some comments. First is here our 
our comments from the Bangsamoro Electoral Code. Okay, so under Section 5, the definition, the specific term as used in this code shall have the following meaning. So our comment is the qualification of Bangsamoro Electoral Office. The preference of applicants residing in the place of vacant position should perhaps be reconsidered in as much as familiarity is inimical to the performance of Bangsamoro Electoral Office and also this is somehow discriminatory. So for the Section 5 Constituency Representation Bureau function, uh, what about the sectoral representative? What bureau or office will supervise and regulate? Then Section 9, National and Local Election Bureau. What would happen to the current election officers? the EOs in the areas of BARM, will they be absorbed or BARM will, have, will hire new election officers? And for the Section 19, the redistricting for parliamentary membership, it should be consistent with the number of parliament seats allowed under organic organic act, example the 80. If it will exceed the latter, the same is repugnant to said organic act, section 6, act, article 7 of RA 11054. So uh, if it increases of 80, Congress of the Philippines should approve the same. Then, manner of selection of sectoral representative. Uh, with all due respect, the import of hearing provision is quite big and whimsical in as much as seemingly the discretion of determining the sectoral representative lies solely on the decision of one entity who is nominated by parliament through speaker and subsequently appointed by chief minister. The principle of democratic process is apparently disregarded. This is with the assumption that there is only one sectoral organization. There is no problem if only one sectoral organization that will be accredited by BEO or the Bangsamoro Electoral Office. What if, say, in women's sector, there, there would be two or more women organizations that will be accredited by BEO? How does the parliament select from among, the, among of them? The said procedure is not intimated in this provision or otherwise the otherwise the that will be accredited by uh, BO. How does the parliament select from among them? The said procedure is not intimated intimidated in this provision or otherwise the policy really of BO is only to accredit one sectoral organization for each sector. Now again, this is contrary to the essence of democracy for each staffles, the will of the members of the sector to select their qualified and competent member. Thank you. 
<laughs> okay. Um, so uh, our recommendation here, we have three recommendations. First is uh, if possible to conduct general registration of voters before BARM election to ensure that the voters list is clean. Then second recommendation is to conduct voter education from voter registration uh, during election and post election. Another three recommendation is to establish uh, emergency accessible polling place for person with disabilities to all polling centers in BARM and also to engage uh, citizens arm in monitoring of the election. So yun lang po yung aming recommendation. So that's all. Thank you. Thank, thank you, uh, Ma'am Mariam K. Ali. And that is the end of uh, the list of resource persons that we have for today. Uh, we reiterate our uh, expression of appreciation for everyone who came who took the time to read through the uh, bill, uh, scrutinize each provision, and uh, present their uh, comments and position here in this public consultation. But we reiterate, for those who have not done so, uh, we will be receiving still position papers up to October 31, 2022, and uh, email addresses to which you can send the position papers are flashed uh, right now. So we now ask the Deputy Floor Leader, Attorney Mary Ann Arnado, to give the... Okay, uh, I will call on um, MP Lorena, but we want to just say no, uh, that we are not yet deliberating. Uh, the purpose of the consultation is just to hear uh, the positions, the comments of our resource person. Sige, uh, Attorney Lorena, MP Lorena. Thank you, Madam uh, Chair. I would just like to thank our uh, resource persons for highlighting some of the more important provisions that need be revisiting. We just like to assure them that uh, we are well aware of the limitations of the electoral code that we will be preparing. And I would just like to set the premises because I'm part of the uh, electoral committee of the ministerial committee that we are aware of the limitation of the constitutional provisions on constitutional commissions. We will adhere to that, particularly Section 15. In fact, even our autonomy is limited by Article 10 of that constitution. Secondly, we are also aware that uh, under Section 4 of the ball, the electoral system of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region shall adapt should be consistent with election laws. Allow democratic participation, encourage the genuine principles of political parties, meaning uh, the idea of coming out with some regulations for political parties is along that mandate. But more importantly, the Bangsamoro Electoral Code will likewise stay within the following pertinent provisions of the board. Uh, following provisions are Article 7, Section 5, Article 4, Section 4. This includes referenda because we will have to have our own referenda system, classification and allocation of seats in the parliament under Article 5, Section 7 for representative uh, reserve seats for non more indigenous people. But we will combine to all those provisions. We would just like to mention that with the provision of the constitution, Autonomy is given the legislative power to enact legislation within its territorial jurisdiction in order to facilitate the implementation of meaningful laws within the region. And that would include the electoral system. And I think the mandate given us by 11054 was to drop an electoral code, an electoral code that would enhance part, uh, participation of poor people. So we thank our resource for highlighting some of the points that have to be revisit, revisited, but we will revisit it on the basis of our mandate and on the basis of the limitation that has been provided for us by the Constitution and National Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. 
We now call on Deputy Floor Leader Attorney Marian Arnado for the closing remarks. Good noon. I hope you are enjoying your lunch. Uh, on behalf of the Committee on Rules and the Bank Samoro Transition Authority, I would like to thank our resource persons for coming over, for presenting uh, your positions. Uh, it is very, very um, uh, insightful to listen to all of your inputs and be rest assured that uh, we are going to uh, uh, review and uh, refer to your positions when the deliberation of the electoral code will actually happen. But uh, for this morning, we thank you for enriching the draft with uh, so many inputs that will be very helpful in improving the uh, final B uh, law on the electoral on, or the electoral code. So, in particular, uh, let me uh, uh, thank uh, the Le legal network for truthful elections, Lente, uh, for coming over. Can we uh, give them a round of uh, applause? And then the National Citizens Movement for Free Elections, Namfrel. Thank you. Salamat. The Parish Pastoral Council for Responsible Voting, PPCRV. The Ateneo School of Government. The Philippine Center for Islam and uh, Democracy. Uh, the Bangsamoro Free Elections Movement. Uh, the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines. The Women Engaged in Action on UNSCR 1325. Thank you for increasing the threshold of the women representation and uh, the Mindanao Organization for Social and Economic Progress. So, and of course, uh, Dr. Socorro Reyes from the Center for Legislative Development of the De La Salle Institute of Governance. So thank you very much. The, uh, of course, my... Uh, our president in the Integrated Bar of the Philippines, uh, Attorney Bart M. Estrada. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, uh, let me also thank all the members of the committee for your very active listening uh, participation in this uh, hearing. And uh, also to the committee, uh, the, the secretariat of the committee, Congratulations for a very successful uh, uh, conduct of the hearing. And of course, uh, the non-members who are also here. Uh, uh, there are many of you, but uh, Kelly Antao is here, MP Kelly Antao, MP Tata um, um, Maglangit, uh, they're here. And of course, the birthday celebrant is over there. Uh, thank you for all coming. Good afternoon. Maayong hapon sa tanan. Sige po. We will have a ceremonial awarding of uh, certificates Token. and tokens. But for now, we declare this public consultation closed. Thank you very much. We ask the resource persons, all resource persons to go to the front to receive the certificates uh, of appreciation and the tokens. Saan nga ba? 